Hey, Edgelords, thanks so much for tuning in on your internet tuner. Uh, we want you to hit subscribe. Isn't that right, Rob? That's right. That way you'll get the episodes as they come out every single Wednesday. You need it and you want it. Oh, baby. Here we go. You guys know what time it is. I know what time it is. It's time for the Edge Lords. Wow. We are doing it. This is a solo intro for anyone watching on uh, YouTube. You can see that if you're just listening to the audio. Uh, maybe you haven't figured it out yet. I am here uh, without old grandma, without old Grammuel. Uh, we uh, mistimed something a little bit, but don't worry. Uh, for the whole episode, for the interview, uh, we do have old Grammo here. Uh, there's no one. Look, it, it feels so empty if I... This week in edging. Uh, it's just not the same when I'm not cutting old Grammo off and I'm cutting myself off. Uh, so we do have a fantastic guest I'm saying let's just get straight to the guest because if not, I'm just sitting here talking uh, to myself, uh, talking to you guys who can't respond. But uh, what I could do, I can tell you to rate and review the podcast uh, in iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. If you're on YouTube, uh, hit us with a like and subscribe, but definitely rate and review the podcast. Uh, we'll read any fun reviews we get on the show. Won't that be fun for everyone? Huh? Isn't that exactly what you want? To tune into your favorite podcast and hear the hosts read reviews from other people to you and a uh, thinly veiled attempt to get you, to induce you to also write reviews. Doesn't that sound fun? It sure does to me. I'm sure it does to you too. Uh, Anyway, let's get to the guest. Graham, you should be excited because we have an amazing <laughs> guest with us here. She is a stand-up comic, oh, co-host of the Reply Guys oh. podcast. Her work has been featured in the Boston Globe, the New York Times, and NPR. She can be heard on Sirius XM Radio. Oh. And most importantly, she is in a loveless but committed relationship <laughs> with the co-host of this podcast, Graham K. Ladies and gentlemen. Guest Lord. Welcome, Daddy. <laughs> Julia Claire, everybody. <laughs> Julia Claire, all right. Wow. Hello. Couldn't have said it better myself. Well, wow. I'm beautiful wow. intro. Intimately familiar with the relationship, <laughs> so I, I know I, what I know. Let you me know? tell you something. I learned a lot from that intro. <laughs> Yeah, have you you guys? Uh, you don't ask any of these questions, huh? No, he doesn't know anything about me. I don't ask for questions. I'm oh. the man. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. But I imagine you ask Graham lots of questions. I have to. How do you when, like your uh, a casserole? Right. How do you? Yeah. When I come home from a long day of work, <laughs> <laughs> in the salt yes. mines. Yes. When I come home from a long day of sitting on my couch, <laughs> thinking about zingers. Yeah. Uh huh. And then she comes home from work. Also, I don't right. go. Uh, how is taking care of the kids? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, well, you're also thinking of zingers all day. Right, you guys have I am. The same job. I'm thinking of zingers all day too, but I also have a job that pays me regularly oh, with, with benefits. We should look into some of those, huh? Listen, you don't need benefits if the government thinks you make no money. That's true. <laughs> Does the government think that, or is that a reality? <laughs> I've told them <laughs> it was a reality, and I haven't uh, updated them Good. yet. Yes, it's well, just a scam that I haven't tried yet, and honestly, that's on me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I get it, uh, but you should try. I highly I recommend. It. <laughs> uh, it's it's so great. It's so great uh, not uh, working. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so great sponging money off of <laughs> others if you can. I highly recommend it. I'm not sponging money off anybody. I pay my taxes. You work so much, though. Yes, but but I would prefer to do nothing and sponge money on No, I know. But I'm yeah. saying of the two, like this relationship, this podcast relationship seems really imbalanced. What are you talking about? Well, I do. Uh, you you said did. this would happen. You said she would try to drive a wedge between yeah. us. <laughs> and she's doing it. That's what I women am, do. I'm going to Yoko Ono this podcast <laughs> so fast. You have no idea. You know, I think Julia should... Uh, uh, do some intros. I like what she's saying. I like what she has to say. I think she's making a lot of sense all of a sudden. Thank you, Julia. Wait a second. Robbie has two jobs. Working pretty hard over here. You forget to post the podcast all the time. What do you do here? <laughs> what do you do here exactly? I almost forget to post it every week, but then I do. But then you generally do. I generally do. Eight out of ten times you post oh, the podcast. Oh, nine out of ten. No, it's a, it's a solid eight it, out of ten. You yeah. think twice? 
No. Solid eight, soft nine. I don't think I've forgotten <laughs> twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, we are here now, and this is a big moment because we're about to find out if your girlfriend is edgy. Yeah, I, I've always been attracted to edgy women, so Honestly. a lot's riding on this. Mm -hmm. This is big. Yeah. yeah. So we do that, of course, Julia, you must know, because I'm sure it's all Graham talks about. Mm -hmm. We assess your edginess via the edgy lightning round. Okay. Uh, she does uh, mention, I think, because in a good, it's an, she, she admires me. Uh, she admires it, but she mentions it a lot. Yeah, I'm kind of not. She seems to be that I do watch my con my own content a lot. <laughs> it's true. I think because she thinks it's cool. So no, that's why she. The mentioned. number of times all of a sudden there's just an explosion of sound and it's Graham's own voice coming from his phone <laughs> is. It's just, it's too many to count. It's I post a lot of content and I want to check up on so, it. And I also, when I'm posting it, you know, the, the various... I mean, say whatever you want to help you sleep at night. I don't know. <laughs> now I'm suddenly concerned with our YouTube views. Are they artificially inflated <laughs> by you? Just Graham refreshing. <laughs> I just have a viewing farm in my, <laughs> of one. I'm like a homesteader. I do it all myself. <laughs> well, we're making all that sweet ad money off of your views, yeah. so we'll take it. Um... So, at the end of this edgy lightning round, we will rate you between one and five kettlebells okay. of edginess. And you want five. Mm. So, we are off to the races. Edgy, edgy light, lightning round. It's electric. <laughs> Doesn't that turn you on? So horny right now. The sexual energy you. in here is explosive. Told you, Graham. Told you. <laughs> Told you what those bumps would do for your relationship. <laughs> All right. Julia, we start, as we start with every guest, with the holy trinity of questions. What is your favorite drug, alcohol, and cigarette brand? Okay. Uh, favorite drug, Adderall. Favorite alcohol, gin. Favorite cigarette brand, American Spirits, which I know is not the edgy. I know it's not a cool one, but it's, it's what I got. I, first of all, I think American Spirits is a cool one. No. Because it's like, yes, it is. Because it's like, look, everyone, they know their Marlboro and their whatever. Paul Parliaments. Malls, Newports, Parliaments. Paul Malls. Yeah, I'm classy. All right. Uh, <laughs> or the opposite. Uh, but American Spirits, first of all, you're talking 20% uh, more expensive than any other cigarette That's right. behind that counter, which yep. is a power move. You're saying money is no object right. to me. No. Nope. Uh, I have so yeah, and, much of it. I and you'll live nothing. longer by maybe four years, mm -hmm. maybe yeah. three. Yeah, you get a, a different type of, you get an organic cancer with it, which yes. is nice. Yes. Yes. You get a kind of a green. Yes. 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 A green, green cancer. cancer. The kind of cancer you would get before industrialization. That's right. Old it was school. consumption. Yeah. <laughs> vintage, a vintage yeah, cancer. Yeah. The Black Death. Yeah. Where you get, yeah. you get sent Black away. Lung. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Where you get sent away to the sanatorium. Mm -hmm. oh, that's right. Yeah. In the mountains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... Yeah, we need to eat. She, she needs mountain air. She needs a... <laughs> yeah. That's so much better than dying in Bellevue Hospital yeah, in Queens or something. That's no. true. Uh, and wait, oh, favorite drug? Adderall. Do you take Adderall, Adderall to write and stuff? No, uh, I just... I have before, but I haven't had access to it in a long time. I just have really fond memories of doing a lot of yeah, yeah. schoolwork on Adderall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just feeling insane. I never, I never, I've never taken Adderall, but it always sounds like when I hear like other comics, like talk, it sounds like a superpower where they're like, I yeah. sit down and then I write mm. for 11 hours. It, like, is. it yeah. is. Yeah, I've done it a few times. I I've mean, been prescribed it, but I never. The trick is, is that you have to block, if you're going to do that, you have to like block every social media website. Yeah. It, because if you don't, then you're just going to be really locked in. Right. To, to like Twitter or Twitter. something. Yeah. You're just going to be the best in the game at Twitter <laughs> uh -huh. for 11 hours yes. and then you're going to crash. Which is just, that just happens to me on like a Sunday. Right. Anyway. Anyways. Yeah. That would be, I couldn't, if I ramped that up, it would be, it'd be horrendous. Sunday's your day? Oh, there's just one of the days where I might uh, have 11 free hours to sit and look at Twitter, you know. No, and, but also, but, I mean, on which day is Robbie not the king of Twitter? Oh, I'm certainly not the king of Twitter, no, but I'm, I'm wasting you are a lot of the time. The princess on there. of Twitter. I have one fifth of your following on there. And that doesn't mean anything. It means everything. Everyone's, clout is everything. Have Numbers. You, no. you think I have clout? Everyone's so mean to me. <laughs> Twitter. It's harder to be. It's her, harder her, to be a woman on Twitter. Her DMs are all mm -hmm. Russian men going, "You have dog face. You are dog face women." <laughs> or yeah. Or Russian men going. 
you very beautiful. You be my sugar baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, those are what those are my DMs are like as well, which I love. I'm like, oh, thank you, <laughs> Sergey. <laughs> Perhaps I will be your sugar baby. Um, yeah. They either want to marry her or they want to take her down a peg. Pretty yeah. Funny. There's no in between. A that. few pegs. A few pegs. Calling me dog faces. It's <laughs> <laughs> more than one peg. That's a few. Yeah. That's gonna. That hurts. <laughs> <laughs> they. I've checked. They. They always look like crap, though. If they were if they were hot guys, I'd be upset. Yeah, I'd be like, maybe no, right? They don't know what they're talking about. Yep, good stuff. Julia, <laughs> yeah. uh, Julia, what's your best tat? And you have to have one. Okay, um, I've been thinking a lot about this. I I'm from Boston, mm. and so the uh, the tattoo du jour for. Boston townies is mm-hmm. include usually includes the Sitco sign, uh, which is part of the Boston skyline. Is that a gasoline company? It sure is. Okay, and you can see it from Fenway Park. Just this giant sign that says Sitco. Um, so wait, they get the word Sitco tattooed on them. The, the gasoline sign, company. The gasoline company. So, anyways, <laughs> yes. Do I have a full back tattoo of the Sitco sign? Well, you are from Boston. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've never wait. I've never heard this. This is so crazy to me. People get so because Sitgo is like based in Boston. I, I guess, guess or whatever. I truly don't even know. It could be based in. It's just an iconic sign on the skyline of Boston that you can see from Fenway. That's why everybody knows it. The gasoline company, the petroleum company, and then people are they have so much pride in Boston. Bobby, you're from. Florida. No, I get that. <laughs> and even so, people aren't rolling around with shell oil like tattoos. They have well, a lot maybe of trashy they should. Stuff. But a sicko tattoo is uh, that just blows my mind. Stop, I didn't know this was a thing. Stop making fun of my culture. Like we get, like uh, you know, yeah, like an alligator like biting a Seminole Indian like <laughs> in a casino or something. I'm like sick. You know, that's cool. That is everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's your steak crest. Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah. No, it truly is. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but Sitco, that's surprising to me. And oh. it's, you know, it's, you, you haven't really committed to it unless it's a full back piece. Oh, yeah, so that's what I got. Of course. I think when I think Boston, I think the Prudential building. Well, that's, yeah, that's one of the nice ones. Okay. But you know, you're not going to be able to, there's no branding on that. Is it that not? Sucks. It doesn't have a, I would love to get a Prudential life insurance <laughs> tattoo because it's uh, sensible. Yeah. Yeah. That is. I like to make sensible tattoo choices. Uh, I'm thinking about actually getting a tattoo. Oh, yeah? What do yeah, you yeah. get? I don't know. Something for my don't brother. Don't get my mother's maiden name on your uh, arm. Well, you my decided dad to do that. Your dad it. Yes. hated it. She was there and my dad saw it for the first time. Oh, I get. I could see why a dad would hate that. And I never quite considered really that. And he was really clenching because I know because I was there and he uh-huh. was trying to yeah. dress up his reaction, I think. But he was just like, yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. I will say as tattoos go, that one is not cool. Fair. Yes. I would almost prefer the Sitco logo. Yeah. No, I, right. I get that a lot. Uh-huh. That's what the guy said who was, did the tattoo. <laughs> are, you, so, are you sure you want your I've mother's maiden name? I've done a lot of tramp stamps, he said. <laughs> of the Sitco I've sign. I've done neck tattoos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And this is this takes the cake. Okay. I've never seen it. He goes, I've never done a tramp, a, a tramp stamp on someone's arm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So this is so degrading of an arm tattoo. Mm-hmm. It's technically. And a when you think stamp. about that, that's innovation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. You're doing something new here. I'm mm-hmm. thinking about getting something like rung around my left forearm. Yeah, yeah. Barbed wire. Not barbed wire. Yeah. Uh, but that would be the location of it. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But should I do barbed wire? Yeah. Would people respect me more if yes. I did that? Would be funny. My power? It'd be really funny. If you Tribal armband. I don't want. There we go. Now we're talking. I'm bringing it back. <laughs> Get a tattoo uh, of this podcast l- logo. Uh, I, you know what? That would be a pretty sick tat on my stomach. Mm-hmm. Maybe chest, maybe both, maybe. Chest. Why don't you be the first like, guy? Like thug life. Exactly. In the Edge same Lords. style. Yes. <laughs> Just three of them. Cause it doesn't work that <laughs> no. unless right. you're three, but here's, here's, why don't you do this? Why yeah. don't you be the first person for their first tattoo to be a neck tattoo? Yeah. I only got one. <laughs> well, that neck. would be, yeah. Just edge Lords. Just this podcast logo. Whatever you want. Well, then I'm getting the Sitco get sign. That arm. Yeah, Sitco I was oh, going to say, if get you're not getting the Sitco sign, yeah. why don't you just fucking go home? Yeah, right. yeah. I'm getting British Petroleum. <laughs> BP. Uh, why not get the armband thing on your neck? Neckband? Yeah. 
Okay. Or the BP oil spill right here. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's really edgy. I do like that. Yeah, like I, uh, an oil rig here, but then the, it's spilling all the <laughs> yeah, way down. A lot of dead ducks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but they're being washed by... Uh, Dawn Dish Soap. Which is owned by... BP. Is that true? Yes, they win. Oh, every time. really? That true? That's a little circular thing they did. Oh, that's so brilliant. Oh, so it was all the oil spill, spilling billions of oil was done to sell millions in Dawn. Dawn dish soap. Dish, dish soap. Well, that's a conspiracy that we're breaking open right. This is here, a huge moment right for the now. podcast. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. Well, I'm, I broke it open, but um, yeah, it doesn't seem like you made the connection yeah. the way we did. But <laughs> you just kind of said it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, Julia, you host a leftist feminist podcast called Reply Guys. Yes. <laughs> Do your male listeners prefer to be addressed as beta boys or uber cucks? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, most men do have a pretty good sense of humor. I bet that they would love either. I bet that they would love to be called beta boys. <laughs> I think you should start. I think that's cute. The reply guys, beta, beta boys. boys. <laughs> yes. You can sell some merch. <laughs> we usually call them reply guys, reply guys. Yeah, that makes sense too. Yeah. That makes more sense. But I like beta, beta boys. Beta boys yeah. is good. Beta you can boys say anything because really we can guarantee you there's zero crossover <laughs> between this podcast Wait, and your podcast. Wait, what was the other one? Uh, Uber cucks. Uber cucks. <laughs> yeah. Uber cucks are beta boys. <laughs> Oh, they're both so good and yep. they're so different. Exactly. <laughs> That's the secret. Really yeah. evocative titles. <laughs> would you accept a reply, guys, uh, listener to this podcast or would, should we block them? I don't really understand what you just said. Uh, we can block downloads from reply, guys, listeners of Edgelord's podcast. Still don't understand what you said. Okay. So, what's a reply, guy? Okay. Okay. So, your girlfriend, she has a podcast. <laughs> did you yeah. know about this? Yes, I did. He know. doesn't ingest any of my content he just I ingesting listen. his own content yes wow i have to i have to make sure everything's good <laughs> i'm just constantly watching his own content on a loop and <laughs> look I, he doesn't I, have time to listen i've to I've, I've i listen i've listened to multiple episodes of your podcast especially when you have a big guest i you've explained what reply guys means to me a cup once and i didn't quite get it <laughs> i just kind of left it i just kind of left. can you it. explain to us and our listeners what reply guys means it's a ubiquitous, it's like an internet term, yes. right? This internet terms have really become a recurring sore spot in our relationship. Why is that? I don't you know about that. Yeah, do you remember? That? This is great. You guys are broken up by the end of this. I, I can't wait. This. Do you remember we had this big, we had this, there was a big to do about TLDR, Too Long Didn't Read. Uh-huh. You know what that is, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm familiar. This was like, he was just beside himself that he didn't know what this was. And he was like, this is not a thing that people say. I was like, it's on the internet. It's a thing. It wasn't TLDR. It was something else. It was TLDR. No, it was something. It was something else. I can't remember what it was. You're wrong. Oh, you're right. No, you're right. (laughs) Is, that, is this usually how those go? Yeah. I just, need, just need to get the files out. I, dust them off. I say BRB out loud as like a, just a regular turn of phrase now. That sucks. Uh, I, know <laughs> that. No, I don't I don't, I don't. don't mean to. I just do. I'll get yeah. up and be like BRB. Yeah. Uh, are you a ha 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 or an LOL in text? Ooh. If, I'm actually, if it's actually really funny, it's uh-huh. a ha ha ha. Got it. LOL, I want to kill you. <laughs> okay. Murder your family. Uh-huh. TLDR was one of the first times I felt old. Right. Everyone knew what it meant in the room except for me. And it was like, I would have known if I was five years younger what TLDR meant. That one's been around for a long time. I feel like you just kind of missed it. It's yeah. not even an age thing because that one's been around forever. Yeah. I just don't know stuff. That could it's be like a the whole thing. Internet's like school. Yeah. You DR. You- it's just a bunch of like. Yeah, it's a bunch of rules and information, and uh, no, no rules. It's the wild west. But there's a lot of uh, <laughs> it's it's a lot like of school. detail work you gotta you gotta pick up. It's just like school. You have there's to pay attention. A lot of pornography. <laughs> yeah. Drugs <There's> a- <laughs> for sale. Yeah, people constantly trying to sell you boner pills. It's like school. Yeah. yeah. It's like school in that I in like it's a lot of information that I don't understand. 
<laughs> oh, well, sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, then, yeah. then I agree. In well, that way, sure. I agree. With you. Yeah, it's a lot of detail stuff. God. I get that. You're you know? a big picture guy. I'm not enough. I'm not anything. Yeah, you're a too long didn't read type too of guy, actually. Read. Yeah. Uh, I think that it describes you. Perfectly. That's why it really hurts. That's why it does hurt. That's you why it should hurts. be. You are the poster boy for TLDR. You describing me as a TLDR type guy hurts me. <laughs> I felt hurt there. So your whole concession was it was so much information. I I can't read it all. I can't judge. That makes that's you not the what TLDR I guy. I, that's not what I said. What it's did you just, say? It's just uh, it's a, a lot of details, guys. Mm -hmm. I think what we're getting away from is that I'm famously young <laughs> yes let's not lose sight of that and yeah. yes hip you are young you are hip you know what tldr is i know what tldr is yeah. and people yell at me on the internet every single and day russian people want to be your sugar dad right yeah i couldn't be cooler you're the coolest <laughs> you are the coolest. i'm gonna skateboard out of here and we'll weigh that into our uh our uh, kettlebell turn? ranking it is your turn you hold oh wait that would you say that uh, name three ways the trickle-down economy has helped you. Oh, my God. Did you choose this question? No. <laughs> We're big advocates of Reaganomics. Right. Yes, podcast. we right. are. Thank you. You're welcome. Supply side. I know this is a big, yeah, it's a big Keynesian podcast. Very Keynesian good. A couple of Keynesian boys. A couple of Keynesian boys. Just uh, let, let the hand. The invisible hand of the market. Let it, you know, fix mm -hmm. all, everyone. Everything is fine. It's doing great. Yeah. Money just comes down. No notes so far. Trickles down. How has the trickle down economy helped me? Three, Three ways. ways. <laughs> <laughs> Three is. Um, I, I don't, how can I answer? I've never even been... How can you pick just three? I know. How, uh, yeah. so you pick your favorite three. And just my fire them favorite off. three. The trickle down economy has helped me. Well, maybe it inspired the HBO show Succession. Yeah, well, that's one. Yeah, that's, that's one. A great okay, show. that's mm -hmm. a good one. Yep. Okay. Um. And uh, museums, <laughs> right? I don't know. Billionaires are always sure they're given to museums. Yeah, they're trickling that money right trickling. down to museums. Uh huh. <laughs> and by that, full of like museums. stuff that they stole in the first place that's to display. Right. That's right. So that's a that's twofer. the trick. And then they also the get government can't fund the museums because they have no money left because they're uh, the lobby groups are pushing them to uh, put make arms and right. then hand them over to the Taliban when it's inconvenient. That's right. Which we support. This yeah. is, <laughs> and this is also. I am so sorry for forgetting. I did not. I I just you know I, I forgot my place here that this is a you know a top-notch uh foreign relations podcast as well foreign policy well dress you dress for the job you want yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes so mm -hmm. billionaires are constantly mm -hmm. giving to museums and different foundations so that they can uh hide their money and also be seen as philanthropic yes so in that way great job fellas okay. uh right. number three um, trickle down and not economy has helped me. Um, uh, the, uh, the, I'll go in the same vein as, I guess. It's giving you stuff to talk about on Reply, guys. That's true. Oh. A lot of content generator. It's a podcast. content generator. So succession, right. museums, and Muse your own podcast. And my own podcast. Yeah. With and it's the, really if, raking in a lot you of money. Think about this. Mm -hmm. If... Um, Reaganomics had never existed, and you watch your damn mouth. And let's say Bernie won two elections ago. You wouldn't have a podcast. You wouldn't have even have a job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, look, you do have a podcast. That's a leap. <laughs> you do What'd you podcast? talk about? Everything's nice. Technically, it's like the way we want the billionaire class. Our job creators. Because you have that podcast, when you think about, when you really think about it, and don't like you know TLDR, don't like go into all the details. Don't look but, too hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't look under the covers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> they have created your job. Wow. So thank, yes. You're which welcome. is what the whole point was. Yes. I've they have created down. created my job for which I am paid even less than minimum wage. Which is exactly how they want it. That's how they want it. Uh, okay. A perfect right. system for them. Good answer. Uh, Good answer. As you mentioned, uh, Julia, you are from Boston. Uh, what do you find more comforting, the taste of fresh Dunkin' coffee or the sound of an off-duty Irish cop assaulting his wife? 
Dad? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, officer. Uh, um, Her dad mm -hmm. was an off-duty uh, Irish cop. Yes, but, but your mom famously unassaulted is my understanding. Yes. Yes. Yep. Famously. Famously. As the one. On the record. As the one. The, on the, the one record. Cop my mom, life in Boston. Yeah. Yes. Um, I mean, both of those really, in different ways, are the taste of home. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I grew up around um, mean Irish cops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that really, that's like a warm hug for me. <laughs> Charlene, um, something like that. <laughs> All right, Grammy. You're a vegan who tries not to use leather. Would you think it's okay to wear a belt made out of an anti-vaxxer who succumbed to COVID? <laughs> yes. Good question. Mm -hmm. Good question. Mm -hmm. I'm, I want to be on the record and say yes. Okay. Okay. Would, would that belt be more valuable if it was made from Eric Clapton? Ooh, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a piece a, of history a little piece of, yeah yes oh. have you George? listened to his his anti-vax song i just the 30 seconds that was on twitter mm -hmm. i can I, I you know what i can honestly say like i truly don't give a shit like it, it's so stupid and dumb to put it out there but like there, i promise you there is no one in the world taking their cues from eric clapton there's no one who's like clapton said we don't have to wear masks. I'm not yeah. wearing a mask. Anymore. <laughs> like if he was some influential guy, like he's got a lot of great songs, but no one is like, we should do, do you hear what Clapton said? About I think the a lot of boomers are like, it, it, it fortifies their already crazy. Yeah. Views. And also you have very, I feel like your parents are very unique uh -huh. in that even though they're in, uh, probably the same age group as my parents. Yeah. Like your dad seems like he would be immune to a lot of the, boomer nonsense no i wish that were true is but that really he has been the like fox news brain worms have definitely like crawled their way into okay. him as well and he was he never used to be that guy mm. like my whole life growing up he was not that guy he's always a contrarian you know in general like like to like pick apart arguments or whatever but like yeah we were i mean this is true we were i said i might have told you this before it's a good story but we were sitting on the couch out here and he just like all of a sudden, he just shakes his head and goes, ah, this country. And I was like, what is it? And he had gotten a Fox News alert. Uh, this was like a month ago, just before the Olympics. And it was like, trans athlete hopes to win gold at the Olympics so they can burn flag on the podium. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so much nothing. It was like a, a thing that hadn't happened and wasn't going to happen. Just this imaginary triggering scenario. It was a Fox News word cloud. That's exactly okay. what it was. <laughs> yeah. And it actually made my dad be like, God, Dad, what's happening to this place? I'm like, nothing. Nothing is happening. You just read a sentence. Does he watch Fox News? Uh, he claimed, whenever I talk to him, he's like, you know me, I don't watch the news. And then he'll like hit me with a very specific talking point that you could have only gotten from like Fox and Friends <laughs> at 6.40 a.m. But What did you say to him when you saw that? Did you say that this was like a talk, this was just a bunch yes, of Yes, I was, like, what, I was like, what are you mad at? Because nothing has happened. Yeah. This thing isn't going to come to pass. Did you explain to him that this was like a, a leading yeah, of lying statement? Yeah, I mean, yeah, what yeah. did he say? He's unconcerned with that. That because that part's not interesting to him. The interesting thing is the I think he has an addiction like a lot of people to making your blood boil. Yeah, there's this thing about like just feeling something even if it's rage. Yeah, uh, that it's just like easier to lean into than like oh this whole network exists to manipulate me to ultimately this is the crazy to ultimately buy a pillow. I know <laughs> I always say that yeah. yeah to buy a microwave or a, yeah like the world democracy is going to end so. Fox News can sell microwaves. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bowlsmobiles. My, my dad is really... I don't sell those anymore. He's really... He's a... He's, Do it. He's... All right. <laughs> you just had to get one more in there. Um, yeah, my dad says he doesn't watch... I don't think he does, but he is... He has like 30 years of cop brain. That That's will worse never than, be... Uh, yeah. Like, I've been able to make so much headway with him uh politically by just like yelling at him every day for years uh -huh. um and it works anybody listening who has a parent like that just talk to them nonstop Yell at until them they, every day until they fear your calls <laughs> <laughs> he also uh just keep in mind julia he also has a mug that he drinks out of every morning that says julia is a communist <laughs> 
That's true. <laughs> it was that his favorite. True. He got it as a gift from my brother's girlfriend uh, because really she said she had heard him say it a lot. That's so, so funny. Um, he loves it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's very funny. But you know, I've you know he I got him to vote for Bernie. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, it's huge if you got him. Yeah. To vote for Bernie. yeah. I do think it was low key because he wanted to embarrass Elizabeth Warren in her own state. <laughs> that's good. You know what? That's a good enough reason <laughs> for me. That's a good enough reason. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. But also, yeah, at the same time, he is. Uh, there are certain things that I can't. Yeah, I, I'm. I feel like I'm in the Shawshank Redemption, just trying just to slowly whittle away yeah, with yeah. a spoon. Uh, Thirty years of. It's yeah, re-engineering cop order. brain is yeah. pretty tough to do. It is deeply ingrained in there. Oh, I got another Boston question okay, for you. Here we As go. a Boston night, this is a very important one. Ben Affleck or Matt Damon? Ben Affleck. Okay, well, that was decisive. Ben Affleck. Why? Really? Um, because he is truly, he is like one of us. He has a terrible full back tattoo. Have you ever seen it? I've seen it's it. It's like a phoenix. It is huge. It takes up his whole back. It's horrible. He also gets Duncan delivered to him in LA or wherever he is. And there are so many paparazzi photos of him just like, yeah, with a full tray of Duncan all the time. He's a king. He has never looked better. Matt Damon has never looked worse. <laughs> so surprised because Matt Damon's like the smarter, maybe a little more thoughtful, a little more thoughtful, better actor. Yeah, I mean, mm, ugh, funnier. But Matt Damon, funnier. Oh, I don't know about that. Nicer. Not no. Yeah, Did I, you ever see that video of Matt Damon um, on a like director's roundtable, and there was a a woman of color saying that she thinks that there should be more like it should be there should be more opportunities for different kinds of people, and uh, he was like, "Hold on," and then he just explained to her why that's not true. I I remember that. I do remember that. Uh, I don't like fully remember the details of it, but let me tell you why that's not true. <laughs> 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 well, I learned a lot. Yes. <laughs> it's subtle. Wow. Dude's rock. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I actually, I think they're, I, I think they're both funny, but there are like, there's a few years of in the days of like DVD director commentary where Ben Affleck did a few of them and he was generally like kind of toasted when he did them. Yeah. And they are very funny. Also. Like you need to hear the director's commentary of Armageddon. He is <laughs> hammered, just ripping apart this movie he was just in, which is kind of like a ballsy thing to do. Uh, ba basically, just being like, this movie makes no, the whole time, she's like, this makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> Why would they train uh, oil rig guys to be astronauts instead of training astronauts to drill? He's just r absolutely firing <laughs> off at the movie the whole time, and you're like, okay, I kind of love he's this guy. He's embarrassed. At least he's smart enough to be embarrassed. Yeah. yeah. He also yelled at Bill Maher on Bill Maher's oh, show. Oh, I remember that. That yeah. was fun. What did he say to Bill Maher? He called him... My Billy. called him Islamophobic. Islamophobic. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, because Ben had just done... Um, uh, what's that movie? What's the movie that he did? Lawrence of Arabia in yes. Brownface? Yep. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yep. Uh -huh. That's that the was one. the one. Live yeah, action Aladdin. One. Didn't get released <laughs> yes. for some reason. Yeah. He spent so much money Lawrence on Lawrence of Arabia 2. <laughs> 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 Electric Boogaloo. Uh -huh. um, no, what was that? What's that? Argo. Oh, he yeah. He just yeah. done that movie Argo. Yeah. And they shot on location in Iran. And so Bill Maher was doing his whole Bill Maher thing of... Uh -huh. Islamophobia and I don't know it's just got to be embarrassing to be like dressed down on your own show by Ben Affleck <laughs> yeah I, I I don't even know if like I think Bill Maher's so far gone he doesn't even view it that I way uh, no he definitely doesn't he's yeah. this most smug man unbelievably in the world <laughs> yeah yeah it's like it's amazing how smug he manages mm -hmm. to be uh and he's also just getting worse. You know, it, this is what happens as you get older. And I'm like, I watch it and I fear it will be me one day. Of like someone who was like probably like kind of a boundary pushing like way left of center. Mm -hmm. And as you get older and the Overton window shifts, like you kind of find yourself like kind of as this right wing guy. Your dad to, getting yes. Fox News alerts saying exactly. this country. <laughs> yes. And I yeah. know, I know what will happen to me. What's the uh, Overton window? So do I not know? Am I the only, what the? The Overton window is like the kind of acceptable parameters of 
a belief system of li- of like the public belief. Mm. So if you're shifting the Overton window, it's either you know y- people talk about that in terms of like the Overton window has shifted very far right in America in the past forty years, where it's like the acceptable level of discourse is just automatically. Mm. Yeah, we got to talk to Overton. People can, <laughs> yeah, move that window back, buddy. <laughs> buddy, it's uh, too far. Buddy, it's in the wrong place. It's shifted. <laughs> Buddy, this window. Uh, but it's also like uh, perception because people on the like right would argue that the Overton window has shifted way left right, right, and right. Blah, 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 blah. Wow. But, uh, uh, that's all from Ben Affleck or Matt Damon. That's right. I said we need one in there so it'll be conversational. Remember you when you I were, said that? You were. And we got uh, the you Overton did. window for Christ's sake. For Christ's sake, I learned something. And he's just, but also Ben Affleck, again, he's never looked better. He's just, he and J-Lo are probably having the best sex that any, anyone has ever had but in old the people history sex. of the world. But they're like, but they're like older people in their prime, also. Mm. Mm. That sentence makes no sense. Mm-hmm. But they are. They're both so experienced. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, okay. Some people would say that's an insult, but they're you're making it sound like sexually a experienced. Totally. That's true. They're. I mean, I bet it's way better. I don't know because I'm so young. <laughs> 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 well, you are with a very sexually experienced man. I know. He's so old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look at that salt and pepper so, silver fox. That's right. Yes. Probably yeah. filled with secret moves from years of back alley deviance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so many tricks. So many mm-hmm. truck stop <laughs> tricks he's learned along the way. <laughs> Wait, yep. but how do you do? You really not agree with me? I bet they are having like crazy good sex. Uh, <laughs> probably more in their twenties. No way. Yeah. In their twenties. Yeah. I so many say. people don't know what they're doing in their twenties. I feel like uh, most she did. people have it <laughs> pretty I'm well sure figured out by yeah. twenty-five. I think. I bet he didn't. I, I can. Here's why I'm saying that because I haven't done anything new sexually <laughs> yeah. since I turned 25. <laughs> That's turned, when I learned my third position, and I said I'm all good now. There's nothing more to learn here, <laughs> and I don't like it. And I don't like it one bit. We are pushing the Overton window yes. <laughs> of what I'm comfortable with. Wow. Too far left, Too if you know what left. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Break down like, the pipe. That's what I like. This is like reading Rainbow for Graham. I love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're learning so much. But you're using it in sentences already. I'm mm. proud of you, Graham. Right. Julia Claire. Yeah. What is your favorite way to shred your bod? Oh. Yep. Yep. I just r- rage tweeting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just really hunched yeah, yeah, over yeah, 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 yeah. a computer you can sweat or sweat doing that. Heart rate uh-huh. gets and up. I do. I yeah. do. You got yeah. those wrists really oh, going yeah. as well. Mm. Uh-huh. Anyways, that's why I'm ripped. Yeah. <laughs> From taking down Eric that's Clapton. A, absolutely. Yeah. 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 That son of a bitch. All of the people who reply, guys, mm-hmm. uh, to him, to Eric Clapton, and you're like, no, he's not good. Mm-hmm. He's bad. Yep. Bad. That's so typical of my, of my <laughs> style of <laughs> yeah. style. God, you, got, you nailed it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you really know her voice. <laughs> I pay a lot of attention. Yep. Uh, Julia, favorite all time babe, man or woman, we're not here to judge. No, we're not. Okay, favorite all time babe. Oh my god. <sighs> Jane Fonda. Great That's answer. Great babe. Like Barbarella. Yes. But also, I mean, I might even. Yeah. This is right up your reply, guys, Alley. Yeah. We're yeah. talking about yeah. super sexy, but also very politically engaged. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think. I think I would say either Jane Fonda or Brigitte Bardot, but Bridget. probably Jane Fonda because she's just so cool. Also, I don't really know anything she about Brigitte is super Bardot. Cool, and I'm not like I know the name Brigitte Bardot, but I'm not cultured enough to pull up a mental image of what mm. Brigitte Bardot looks like. Can you? Do you know what Brigitte Bardot looks? Oh, like? Oh yeah, yep. hot, long stems. Okay, yeah, very hot. But yeah. Jane Fonda in so many different eras. Yes. Particularly like 60s and 70s Jane Fonda. So hot. So hot. Mm-hmm. Barbarella is like, I didn't really know who, like, I knew the name. I knew older Jane Fonda. I knew the workout. Um, I was a big fan of her work in um, uh, North Vietnam. 
Mm-hmm. Um, Mm-hmm. God, let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up. Uh, yeah, anyway, nobody's heard of it. <laughs> no. Anyway, she. I. I think. I do generally think she's great, but uh, I never saw like young. And and I used to work at a bar in the Lower East Side, and they would play Barbarella. And I just was like, I had trouble working. I was like, who? <laughs> How hot? Six years Jane Fonda. So was. fucking hot. Yeah. I'm to smash my head with a liquor bottle. <laughs> it's just it's like, favorite euphemism for sex. I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, give you the business. <laughs> I like. I like give the business. Give the business. Yeah. I really gave her the business last night. Yep. Yeah. That's what I. That's what I tell her. Yep. Yeah. I really. So I say you want the biz. Yep. I'll give you the biz. Yep. Mm-hmm. You're a businessman. I got the biz. You do have the biz. I got my files are full. <laughs> <laughs> hold my calls. Yeah. Hold my calls. <laughs> I checked the docket. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I checked the docket. It's I checked the docket. And it's it's full of biz. Classic biz. My inbox is filling up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me go enter the fax number. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Here I come. <laughs> anyway, uh, we got to tabulate uh, your scores. See uh, if you earned five kettlebells. Also, can I just say that if either of you dock me points for saying Ben Affleck over Matt Damon, you're you're the squares. Like, you guys are not edgy if you don't pick Ben Affleck. Well, you had some momentum going, then you, squares was your insult. Yeah, choice, they, and you kind of pretty... lost it all there. This is a family-friendly uh, show. I had to say squares. <laughs> also, uh, we dictate the terms around we here. We dictate, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you you trying to time. stage a coup? Yeah. Um, it's kind of edgy, actually, Kind of edgy, yeah. Uh, okay, here we go. Okay. Um, uh, American spirits. Uh, it's not bad. Um, okay. Um, Supporting the organic, native. Organic, but guess. we like uh, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the tat, best tat was quirky good, actually. Yes, yeah, go. I, love yeah, that. I, love it. It. Yeah. I love supporting a love gas it. station. I love, a, a I, love, I love supporting a petroleum company. There. Someone needs to. Small. Uh, shop small. Uh, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I host the Left of uh, podcast. Mm, that hurts. Beta Boys. Beta Boys. I like Beta Boys. I like Beta Boys. Uh, 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 trickle down uh, economy. She was named three, which oh, is very so good. Joe Rogan couldn't name three. Yeah, but she's so thankful uh, for the museums. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's. Uh, I, I love the museums. She, yeah, mm-hmm. she th- she knows that's what Jeff Bezos is there. Yeah, reason for that. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good I point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a king. Yeah. Um, uh, Duncan Coffey after the Irish. Uh, well, she like Duncan Coffey over her dad. That's pretty good. No, that's actually uh, not true. Uh, no, one, no one asked you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she's not a part of this conversation. Yeah. Uh, but she's willing to wear the flesh of a human who died from COVID. Uh, that's pretty badass. As, as yeah, yeah, yeah. The option for yeah. leather, which yeah. you know, like, yeah. provided they were anti-vax. She's Anti- very specific about yeah, that. Yeah, not yeah, just yeah, someone. Yeah, no, 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 she's not insane. No, 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 no. Um. I sure, but Ben Affleck. I mean, I I, I think maybe she got this one too. wrong. <laughs> I think yeah, I think pretty wrong on that one. It makes it pretty insane. Uh, she, yeah, she Island uh, Doctor. Uh, that was a good movie. That Matt Damon. <laughs> 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 and uh, oh, but she likes when you give her the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Respect. That. Yeah, I respect that too. I find it intimidating sexually, mm-hmm. but uh, I yes. I try to live up to the moment. Well, I, just, I don't I always just succeed. Say I didn't say that I I I liked. That. I just said that I like the euphemism. She likes when you give her the business. I, 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 I calls her the bedroom, the board room. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't like what she does. I ask her to but stop. She spells, said, she spells board. I said I was the fired. Other way. I was fired from every office job I ever had. <laughs> but uh, all right, um, what are you thinking? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Here we go, Julia Claire. Five, Five kettlebells. kettlebells. Five yes. kettlebells for you. Yes. Yes. What a moment! God, huh? I'm so, so fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are, and cool enough that that qualifies you for our next segment. Scalding hot takes. Burn me, Daddy. <laughs> when she hears that, she definitely wants you to give wow, her the business. Wow, wow, wow. Mm-hmm. I got some scalding hot takes. You probably got some Lead scalding hot takes. Your own. In. If you got a scalding hot take, feel free to jump in with your own. Uh, okay, here's my first scalding hot take. This one is actually today. It's pretty toasty. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
So our guy, uh, Mike Richards, got the Jeopardy hosting job. Then he lost it because, uh, whatever, podcast. Oh, uh, yeah, and, friend of the show. Friend of the show, yeah. Mike Richards. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Big, uh, we, we're big, we're fans of each other's podcasts. Mm -hmm. He loves ours. We love his. Mm -hmm. uh, but <laughs> so there's all this attention over who's going to host Jeopardy now. There's so much before. And I'll say this. I like Trebek. I think Trebek was great. He should come back. Oh, I'm, I can't. I'm sorry. He is dead. Who's tired? Dead. But okay. Canadian. Canceled. Uh, canceled. He canceled. <laughs> God canceled him. Canceled. Canceled. Canceled, <laughs> canceled by time. Uh, so, uh, but here's my here's my scalding hot take: is that uh, Trebek was just fine, just like any other Jeopardy mm. host would be, just fine. They do almost nothing. There's yes. about 45 seconds of them being themselves on the show. It's a good point. And that's when they're like, oh, what's your name? And then someone tells a fucking goofy story, like, oh, I like whatever, to play chess on the park. And he's like, oh, great. And that's it. That's the only time. Almost anyone could do that job. And we all like Trebek because he did it for 30 years. But if they that's just right. pulled some random guy off the street who was literate, at the end of 30 years, we'd all be like, oh, we miss Chuck. Chuck was yes. so good. That's a really, that's a hot take. It is a hot take. That is, this, let me say, that's, that is a classic Edgelord's hot take. I know. That's a good one. Thank and you. I know what? I fucking agree with you. Yes. I fucking agree with you. Fuck yes. Fuck yes. That's why you're the best co-host in the game. Julia, thoughts? Well, uh, just pick somebody. They've been dragging this thing on forever. Anybody and ever and ever. Why, just if you're just going to pick somebody. somebody, I think it should be Ken Jennings because Ken Jennings is just some guy. Ken would be great. Who happens to be really good at Jeopardy. Ken Jennings would be great. They're saying they're not picking him because of his tweets. Because they're tweets? too fun? Yes. What are his tweets? He's, he tweets a lot of funny stuff. He's super funny on He's Twitter. He's really funny on He's Twitter. He's great on Twitter. But I think he also would like join Twitter in like 2010 when it was still kind of the Wild West when we were all making jokes that you look back on now and we were like, maybe I shouldn't have said that. And so right. those are still like out there. So that's like, the only reason they're out there. Robbie has enemies. a lot of those deep I in his catalog. I have a, a lot um, of them. Mm -hmm. All going all the way back to 2020. Mm -hmm. Back to... Uh, March of 2020, That's and right. then I said I should stop. I should stop saying this. Stuff. I went to Eastern. I went to Western Asia, and I didn't see one single mongoloid. Yes, wow. yes, that was one of my. Yeah. That's one of my famous one of his singers. <laughs> And that's why Robbie should be the next host of Jeopardy. I would, I would, that's, that's my, a that's my hot take. I, that is the show business range that I possess. Yeah. That is a, one of the few jobs I could do just on TV. Some guy. Yes, yeah, just some guy who can read <laughs> out loud. You're looking for some guy? And he's literate? Robbie Slowick. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, for, then there's 45 seconds where I have to say, and uh, I understand that you like to eat uh, breakfast every morning. <laughs> yeah. Well, my show. husband and I, uh, we make oats every morning. He, uh, he buy a bottle of water and he brings the oats. He tears the package open. Oh, well, that's great. Good luck here on the show. Move on. Easy, it couldn't be an easier job. Uh -huh. uh, well, uh, who's, who could possibly replace Alex Trebek? Anyone. Almost anyone. Yep. All right. But not a woman. Oh, good well, heavens, I think no. This is I mean, television. No. no. But certainly what Jeopardy could benefit from is like a Vanna White type who goes and touches the, when they pick like... <laughs> touches their uh, forehead. Yeah, so I'll take potent potables for 600 and she comes by and taps it. <laughs> and of course, she's smoking hot, huge jugs, yeah, yeah. thick, yeah. bathing suit. Now we got a TV show going. We're now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, I'd like to answer something in the form of a question. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing later, toots? Robbie, I should have been TV executive. Oh my god, Robbie, there's yeah. no way they're going to be able to do that. Oh, you're right, you're right. I guess they should then just. But I love that, like that, that character, uh -huh. that sketch you just did, that yeah. bit. Yes, is exactly what happened in the 1970s with Wheel of Fortune. Undoubtedly, and they were like, "Yeah, no. best, yes, sure, blonde, white, <laughs> uh -huh. babe." All the legacy huge TV cans, shows. huge yeah. cans. And they still do that on Price Is Right, and like Vanna White does not age though. She still looks fantastic, and she's still doing the same job, which is amazing to me that she hasn't lost her. I mean, I guess she makes a lot of money, and it probably takes like three hours a week, mm -hmm. but uh, I still feel like you'd lose your mind a little bit doing that thirty years day in yeah. day out. Yes. But she probably uh, does other stuff. Why would you? Yeah, that's true. You're Vanna White. So you don't lose your mind. So your life has purpose. Charity work, maybe. How many? Of those, what do you think they do? They probably film like thirty of those in a week. So they work like one week a month, maybe, or something like one week every six weeks. It's it's actually probably a pretty amazing gig. 
Yeah, it's not a bad gig. Yeah, all right. Shout out Vanna White. <laughs> oh. Right. Um, so this is the a lights in here are so bright. By the way, I'm I've been sweating this whole time. You want me to turn on air conditioning? I can do it. No. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. So I, like I start. I have a uh, I, I have a vegan girlfriend, and then we went on vacation, and she was like, "After this, I am going on a detox," and I was like. Your whole life is a detox. What's the, how do vegans, for the same reason, like how do people in, how, where do people in Hawaii go on vacation? How do people, <laughs> how, how do vegans detox? Yeah, Your yeah, whole yeah. life is penance. That's true. Yes. That's true. And this is one of those instances where Graham could have asked me this question, but he said. We, we like to air this no. stuff out in public. Right. Uh huh. But he, he banked this for a hot take. That's the dedication. Never intending to ask me. Dedication we have to our podcast. We will absolutely <laughs> jeopardize our relationship. My number one this. partner. <laughs> Second handshake of the episode. Wow. Like yes, I, I I agree. What are you? What could oh, you possibly be off. detoxing <laughs> from? Yeah. Vegetables. Fuck off. Yeah. You're detoxing from vegetables. No, I also dr I drank so much in the last week. Green juice. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. Graham's parents absolutely go for it. Oh, yes. They have they a problem. They fucking party. You know, a problem. Yeah. They're I've fucking heard, cool. They're, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're edgy. Mm -hmm. They're extremely cool. And I, they're alcoholics. I couldn't keep up, mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. They're alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they live. Deadbeat parents. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Not like Graham. my Irish cop dad. <laughs> Graham desperately. Desperately trying to get affection from his drunken mother gets her name tattooed on him. She still doesn't care. That's true. Calls him idiot boy. That hurts. She loves the drink, hates her son. That truth loves hurts. the drink. <laughs> that truth hurts. Stop this podcast. <laughs> uh, so what do you do when you detox? I don't know. I just go back. I just don't drink and I try to eat more vegetables. But you're already eating the maximum amount I'm of I'm not vegetables. eating. You can be a vegan and eat. Like, shit, I've done it. I'll do it again. Is, are gummy candies vegan? Depends on the gummy candy. Haribo? I don't think so. Fuck. I guess I can't be a vegan. Uh, <laughs> I got another scalding hot take. Mm. Here, here comes another one. Mm -hmm. Those uh, little vests that people put on service dogs that say, uh, service dog, don't pet me. Mm. Those are cruel. That's animal cruelty. Oh. Because the dog, he doesn't, he doesn't know what that thing says. He's not, no one is petting him. He's out in the world, <laughs> he or she, just seeing every other dog. You could be belly I'm working rubs, all man. day. Yeah. And that, that yeah, working all day. Most animals, almost 99% of animals born retired. <laughs> <laughs> and one day you just put a vest on a dog and you're like, you're a cop now. And you're like, what? <laughs> No pets. You're a cop. <laughs> You're a cop. Get to work. No pets. Yeah, get out there, detective. And yeah. also, clearly, this is a hot take. Mm -hmm. Is like there are clearly a lot of people who buy those service dog vests on the black market or something like that. Oh yeah, Just Amazon. So, so they can exactly <laughs> yes. the trickle down economy mm -hmm. strikes again. Working again. Yes. Um, just so they can bring their dog wherever they want. Yeah, they're lying. That's and those no people, service dog. a Pomeranian those isn't people. a service dog. But they say they have social anxiety. That's how they get away with it. God. Everyone has, that's another hot take I have. Everyone has social anxiety. It's part of being alive. Yes. Uh -huh. Being a breathing human being. Yeah. We had Dan St. Germain on this podcast and he brought his like dog. It's like the dog, he was like, the dog calms my anxiety. And the poor dog was just desperately trying to escape Dan St. Germain's clutch for the whole yeah, yeah. episode. <laughs> yeah. It's just yeah. like, this calms me down. And the dog is like, please, so he's like, somebody uh, help me, please. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they were just, yes, at war with each other for an entire podcast. He's like, Being clutched this by this man. Calm. <laughs> Raises my level of dog anxiety. Uh -huh. <laughs> Extreme dog owner culture is the reason why I personally find LA to be unlivable. There's a whole yes. host of reasons LA is unlivable, and that is one of them that for is, sure. It's up there, yes, I think. Fully. Um, this is actually a good transition into my next hot take. Okay. Uh, you might be a little surprised by this hot take, so buckle up. Oh, boy. Cats 
protect your house better than dogs? Wow. Wow. Go on. Please expound upon this because I'm not, see, I'm, I'm not with you right now. Okay, so, so dogs protect your house mm-hmm. from intruders. Yes. When you're home, uh-huh. people are going to come into your house, steal your TV, uh, beat you up. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, hurt your private parts yes. when you're home. Okay, hurt your private parts. Give okay. you the business. Give you the, Give you the business. <laughs> yes. A legal business. Yes. Black market business. Get called up to the C-suite. Amazon business. Uh-huh. Yeah, Amazon business. And uh, trickle down economy business. Uh-huh. And But in, in statist- statistically, people don't break into your house very often. Sure. People break into, you know who breaks into your house? Rodents. Rodents. Wow. Mice. They come in all wow. the time. Yes. I have never had anyone try and break into my house. I've seen at least three mice in places I've lived. Yes. More than three mice, but three different times I've seen mice in three different houses. Plus, uh, I think I've seen a rat once. If I had, if I live with a cat, none of that would ever happen. None of that would ever happen. You know, Graham spent the whole show throwing me under the bus. Now he's trying to win me back. I see that. Because you have I a was, cat. You look, are, I yes. think outside the box. Uh-huh. <laughs> and sure, one day I've learned uh, through this podcast, it's going to lead me down a path of being a right-wing loon. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I, 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 you, know, you know what's just as effective as owning a dog to prevent uh, a break-in in your house is leaving the radio on and one light on. In, when you leave, there's statistics on on this. Yeah, I'm in. Mean, also, who's, okay. yeah, who's to say that dogs? Well, statistically, that it is it is just as effective doing what I just said as an alarm. I know that. And I know we talked earlier about Graham aging himself, mm-hmm. and uh, he leaves the radio on. <laughs> he leaves the house. Yes. Well, that stat was provided to me uh, over by a decade ago. Walter Cronkite. Uh-huh. By Walter <laughs> Cronkite, the most trusted man in news. That's right. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that is true. You don't need a, a ring or anything, you know, or a, a simply safe. You just need a, a, an FM radio, a transistor <laughs> radio, <laughs> and a light. And a walkie-talkie. Yeah, because yeah. people will be, they'll, they'll be like, this guy has nothing to steal. We don't want... Yeah. We don't want him to steal anything from the radio house. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get a sewing machine and a ooh-y, typewriter. Ooh-y, ooh-y, I got love in my tummy. <laughs> um, We're having a sit-in in there. Uh, okay. Uh, Julia, do you have any advice for Graham and I on how we can be even more edgy than we already are? Oh, my God. You know, you both are, are, are doing it to such an advanced level to begin with. That's true. Um, Can you feel our sexual charisma? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Natural to, animal together. magnetism. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, you do. You both do have a power together. Oh yes, yes, yes. It's a package deal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. it's a yin and yang. Yes, <laughs> both of us were yings. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. A couple That's of right. yings. A couple of yings. Uh, uh, advice to be more. I mean. Robbie, you have to get a tattoo. I'm, I'm, I think I'm gonna. What are you gonna get? I'm trying to figure it out. I'm armband. Trying to figure it out. But get my mom's maiden name. Yeah, I'm gonna get a, an armband of a, those no, orange you, swimmy. You know armbands. what? You have to get a matching one with Casey. You have to get a rope the moon. Oh my god! <laughs> what the fuck? That is tattoo rope is so yeah. awful. Those are like some like country lyrics oh, she has yeah, like yeah, on yeah. the back. Or tribal that. tramp stamp. That's what she has, right? I, I would get a tribal tramp stamp before I would get rope the moon. <laughs> And I mean that genuinely. And Graham, how you can be more edgy um, this is, good info. is probably by like being an active listener, if I could offer hmm, one piece okay. of advice. Okay, so this feels like that's really, just something that's you want so anyway. No, 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 no. That's like the edgiest thing you could you can be as an active listener. He's, I'm sorry, Graham, were you, <laughs> you paying attention? Julia, Julia had a suggestion for you. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm. So, oh, he's doing the thing again where he's watching more of his content in his mind now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, Julia, that is our episode of wow. Edge Lords. Thank you so much for having me. How do you feel? 
uh, hot. <laughs> yeah. We'll have you hot. out of this uh, hot room uh, momentarily. Uh, Graham, you want to plug anything? Any dates or anything? Oh my goodness! I'm gonna be at Good Night's Comedy Club. Is this is this gonna not yeah, air this week? Yeah, we're just gonna air this. Week. Oh, good. I'm gonna be at Good Night's Comedy Club on September 3rd and 4th in Raleigh. Did I say it right? Raleigh. Raleigh, North Carolina. Then the following weekend, we're talking September 7th to 11th. I'm going to be in Winnipeg, Manitoba <laughs> at Rumors Comedy Club. Oh, love the, a name like Rumors for yes, a comedy club. They're sexy. Yes, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, rumor is he's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, Julia, anything you want to plug, promote? Where can people find you? People can find me on Twitter, of course, uh, at OJuliaTweets, OHJuliaTweets. And that's where all my stuff is. That's all. All right, and you can check out Julia's podcast. Reply, Reply Guys. Reply Guys. Which is very good. You guys are obviously it's a very good podcast. super I've... edgy, maybe too edgy for that podcast. But give it a try anyway, if anything, yeah. just to dunk on it. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yes. Yeah. You're strong men. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you can see me. Even if you're a woman listening, you're a strong man. Uh, you can see me wherever it is you go to see strong men. Because <laughs> that's where I'll be. Uh, and then let's say, uh, end it as we end every podcast, what we say at the end of every week. Fuck, Fuck you. you.